believe in magic. But a few times in my life, I've seen things, things I can't explain. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is out. Hopefully you've had a chance to see it. It's the final Indiana Jones movie with Harrison Ford. So this will be my video for the ending, the Easter eggs, and what's going to happen in the franchise just in general. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos and careful for spoilers for the movie if you haven't seen it yet. But during the movie, Indiana Jones comes into possession of Archimedes Dial, which is a device that they thought in present day he had created to predict fissures in time sort of like a weather prediction device on steroids that was so precise that it used the irregular movements of the stars, the planets, to predict these time fissures, basically using math to create a time travel compass. But the device itself doesn't open portals through time. It only tells you when a time fissure is going to happen and lead you to it. The main villain of the movie, Jürgen Baller, who's a Nazi played by Maz Mikkelsen, believes that he can use the dial to find a time fissure that will allow him to travel back in time to kill Hitler, even though he's a Nazi. He claims that it was Hitler's mistakes that were the reason that they lost World War II, and he plans to kill him after he's turned Germany into a Nazi state so that they'll have all their forces, but they'll have better leaders within their party that can lead them to victory in war without Hitler taking them off the rails with all of his obsessions over the antiquities like the Lance of Longinus in the movie, which is the spear that was supposed to appear pierce Christ. The Indiana Jones movies have revolved around Nazis and Hitler's search for powerful supernatural artifacts just in general, like the Ark of the Covenant. Just because of the era in which the movies took place around World War II, Crystal Skull is the exception because it took place a little later in the timeline, so it was the Soviets because it was in the 1950s. Dial of Destiny takes place a little over 10 years later during the 1960s, just after the Apollo moon landing, which they use for some comedy at the beginning of the movie. Helena Shaw, played by Phoebe Waller-Bridge, is his goddaughter and the daughter of one of his closest friends, Basil Shaw. They weren't characters in the previous movie, so this is the first appearance of both of their characters. At the end of the movie, they discover the other half of the dial is in Syracuse inside Archimedes' actual tomb with his body. Once they reach his tomb, they discover a bunch of modern items and markings on Archimedes' tomb itself, which is over 2,000 years old. Archimedes is supposed to have died around 212 BC but his tomb is covered in modern World War II plain carvings. They find a modern wristwatch around his wrist when they're retrieving the other half of the dial from his hands. So they take that as evidence that the dial actually works and they think at the time that maybe Archimedes had traveled through time himself. As Voller completes the dial and they begin traveling through the time fissure, he assumes it'll take them to 1939 where he can kill Hitler. Indiana Jones then realizes that Archimedes never realized continental drift, which happens slowly over thousands of years. So the coordinates that the dial are taking them to, the time fissure, isn't going to take them to 1939. They have no idea where they're going to wind up in time. They're sucked in before it's too late to turn away, and it winds up taking them to the Siege of Syracuse right around the time Archimedes was originally supposed to have died. So they've traveled back more than 2,000 years. All the Romans who are in the middle of laying siege to Syracuse assume the World War II plane they're flying is a dragon that the Greeks have summoned to stop their attack. The Romans use their ancient weapons to kill all of Volker's men, including him, and take down the plane. And while this is happening, like while their plane is arriving in the past, Archimedes is seen completing his dial in his study, like the actual dial is still being constructed. He sees their plane and instantly understands that his dial worked as he intended it, someone came from the future, and he winds up finding Voller's corpse with the other Nazis in the crash and takes his wristwatch, putting it on his, explaining how it wound up in his tomb in the future. He also picks up his completed dial that Voller had used in present day, finding Indiana Jones and Helen Shaw next who had parachuted out of the plane before it crashed. They have a funny greeting because Indiana Jones is meeting this ancient person. It's kind of like the end of Last Crusade where he's meeting the last knight. Hello person from thousands of years ago. Archimedes then explains that the dial was always supposed to bring them here to this point. It was predestined. It was all part of Archimedes' plan. They were always meant to meet him. I knew you would come. My strength has left me. That's meant to be a callback to Helen Shaw's comments earlier in the movie about playing cards with a stacked deck in your favor so that you always wind up winning the game, meaning that Archimedes had actually created the dial to bring help from the future to defeat the Romans in the very battle that they're in the middle of. So no matter what anyone had done in the future, no matter which time fissure they had tried to use the dial to enter, it would have always led back to this moment in 212 BC. 
Indiana Jones is bleeding out from a gunshot wound in his shoulder, about to die. He claims he's old. He's had enough. Like, please let him rest. He's an old man. He studied history his whole life. Now that he has a chance to actually experience it, he wants to stay in the past and presumably die there probably pretty soon, considering the level of medical technology, which they also make some jokes about. Like, you're going to die really soon. They don't have medicine here the same way we do in the present. Helen knocks him out in the middle of their argument to prevent him from staying in a bit of a funny moment which is also meant to solve the issue of him potentially altering the timeline through any actions he might have taken in the past. They use the second plane that they brought with them to return to the present with the time fissure, which is still open. There are no changes to the timeline. They don't wind up changing anything because, as Archimedes said, they were always going to come back to this point in time. So they're in the middle of this 2,000-year-plus time loop already when the movie begins, and going through the experience is just something that was destined to happen. At the very end, when he wakes up in his New York City apartment, Helen has brought back Marion Jones from the previous movies, who he had also gotten divorced from several years after the Korean War. The reason why they got divorced is because of Mutt. So the movie does explain what happened to Mutt because he's not really in the movie. There's only a picture of him next to the picture of Indiana Jones' father. They explained during the Korean War, Mutt enlisted in the U.S. Army against Indiana Jones and Marion's wishes just to piss them off and died during the war and the tragedy of Mutt's death just destroyed their relationship. The end of the movie is meant to be sort of a reunion of their characters and she asks him if he's back. It's meant to have a double meaning as in are you back from your recent adventure to 2,000 years ago and also are you back emotionally, mentally, just in general? Like have you checked back in? The idea is that Mutt's death just caused him to mentally check out in his desire to avoid dealing with the pain of the loss. The movie winds up going out on a big Easter egg for Raiders of the Lost Ark, the beginning of the franchise, when they start joking about their bodies hurting. He says every single part of his body hurts because he's an old man now. They start playing the game from Raiders where they're hooking up and pointing to different body parts that she says do not hurt, with him kissing them. They get it on with the camera panning outside of the apartment to the clothesline with his trademark hat. And the actual ending of the movie is him grabbing the hat from the clothesline before a trademark George Lucas Star Wars circle wipe closes the entire frame. Which is also meant to be a reference to him grabbing his hat in all the previous movies just before he loses it to some trap. So it's meant to be an Easter egg for both George Lucas's film style because we're talking about Lucasfilm, the Indiana Jones movies in general, the Star Wars movies too. And it's also meant to be a reference to the fact Indiana Jones' adventures will continue, at least in spirit, because he still needs his hat. Can't go on adventures without the hat in the whip. There's a moment earlier in the movie where Sala, who comes back in this movie, gives him his hat and his whip. Oh, like I grab one more thing from underneath your bed. Can't go on your adventure without your hat and your whip. That being said, Harrison Ford has said this is absolutely meant to be his last time playing Indiana Jones. He's in his 80s for crying out loud. He has no plans to retire from acting just in general. Like he says he does not like being out of work, so he'll just continue acting until he literally dies. But essentially this means no more Indiana Jones movies because Lucasfilm a long time ago said we're not going to do Indiana Jones movies without Harrison Ford. But there were reports of them doing a new version of the young Indiana Jones Chronicles TV show on Disney+. Plus. That's been delayed recently, like status pending, so we'll see what winds up happening with that. But Harrison Ford says he's not involved or not going to be involved with whatever new Indiana Jones TV show they do. If you haven't seen the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles, they just added it to Disney+, Plus, and it's a completely different vibe from the Indiana Jones movies. It's basically meant to cover his teenage and early 20s years. So like during Raiders of the Lost Ark, when he's talking to Marion about their history together as children, it's sort of like that time period. Originally, the rights for that series were tied up with CBS television, and they just got it to Disney+, Plus. so it's been a while since a lot of people have been talking about it. But if you try to watch the first couple of episodes, like you realize this oh, is a completely different vibe from the movies, which is why it wasn't super popular when it originally came out. It didn't run for that long. There were also a lot of deleted scenes that George Lucas filmed and then cut for broadcasts, like an older version of Indiana Jones. They actually ended that series with a joke about him dropping a cheeseburger in a mail slot and telling the mailwoman that he used to be a spy during World War II, so she needed to open the mailbox to get the cheeseburger out because it was part of state secrets, but really he just wanted his cheeseburger. And that was going to be the way the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles went out. Like, can you imagine them going out on a joke like that? That's one of the reasons why George Lucas cut all the scenes of this older Indiana Jones. I believe he was meant to be older in these scenes than he was during the events of Dial of Destiny. So like a slightly older, like mid-80s, maybe even like late 80s version of Indiana Jones. We'll guess what happened to his eye during these events. Like at some point after the events of Dial of Destiny, he got into an accident and lost one of his eyes. 
Just in general, there are a lot of references in the movie to the previous movies. Like instead of snakes, it's eels this time, and they have references to using father's journals. Like he uses his father's journals during The Last Crusade. During this movie, it's Helen Shaw using her father's journals about the Dial of Destiny. Just in general, the movie was much better than Crystal Skull. The bar was pretty low on that, so it wasn't too hard. The ending of Crystal Skull was also a very solid ending for the character because of the wedding with Marion, but this was a pretty good ending for the character, a pretty good bookend. If you watched any of my Marvel videos, I've been talking about Captain America 4 because they've been in the middle of filming that. Harrison Ford has been in the middle or getting ready to finish filming Captain America 4. He's now playing the recast version of Thunderbolt Ross, which was previously played by William Hurt, who had passed away also recently. They have a big Red Hulk storyline planned for that. He's going to become president of the United States during that. So they have big plans for the Thunderbolt Ross character, which is why they recast the character with Harrison Ford rather than have him play some other character. There's a lot of Hulk related stuff that they set up in the previous movies that they're trying to pay off in Captain America 4. But because we make all the jokes about Harrison Ford being so old, like how are they going to do big action scenes with someone who's so old? Because even with Samuel L. Jackson, they run into that problem during the Secret Invasion series where he is in his 70s. So it's hard for him to actually do practical action scenes. With Harrison Ford and all the Red Hulk Thunderbolt Ross stuff that they're doing in Captain America 4, most of that will be special effects, visual effects, motion capture. So he doesn't actually have to do a lot of the action himself. We'll see what that winds up looking like that. We'll probably get a teaser trailer for that by the end of the year. There's a bunch of big stuff coming up, so make sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. Click here for my Secret Invasion Episode 3 video, and click here for all my Captain America 4 first look videos of him becoming Red Hulk Thunderbolt Ross. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.